Okay, great. Good morning, everyone and all, and uh, our folks in the audience. I just got to make sure that I am on. Yes, my microphone is on, Pastor Sharon. The reason she did that is because we were actually uh, recording for uh, Kingdom Community Television, and my mic got disconnected, and, you know, I don't have a big mouth, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so welcome to Vision Sunday. Um, I'm going to lay out, especially for our audience, I'm going to lay out where the church is headed in this coming new year and the wonderful things that God is doing. And also to let people know what we're all about, because we're going to go back to our roots from when we originally started this ministry six years ago. So I just want to play this for you, for you to watch. Amen. So that's Pure Grace Ministries. We are a church that has that a ministry that functions like a church, I should say. I think the Lord, when he first created Pure Grace Ministries, Pure Grace Ministries had more of a global outreach, a global audience. Uh, most churches start local church and then they go out where we went from outside in. Um, that's, that was the Lord's plan for this for this ministry the vision for 2023 is this this is the year of abundant grace 2023 is going to be the year of abundant grace what does that mean pastor well here we go some fireworks and the grace of our lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which are in christ jesus the grace of god is exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in christ jesus you want to trust God more, you have to be more in Christ. You have to be more rooted in Christ. That's how you get more faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. If you understood what God did for you on that cross through His Son, Jesus Christ, you would never fear again. The scripture says, Perfect love casteth out all fear, for fear brings torment. He who fears has not been perfected in love. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That means the love with which you were loved has not been perfected in you. And the good news is God's opinion of you will never change. His opinion of you when the moment you got saved until this moment, no matter what you may think, your life may be a mess, and whatever your problems are, God will never stop loving you. And God will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the, the wonderful, tremendous grace of God and the love of God. Abundant grace. This year, for this ministry and for all those who follow us, for the pastors that I mentor, is the year of abundant grace. That means more of God's grace. Because grace is the divine influence in the Greek upon the heart and the heart's reflection in the life, including gratitude. That means the grace of God that saved you will sustain you and will carry you through life. And it should be evident in your life. It should be evident in the things that you do. You can't say, remember we were just doing this thing recently where we were talking about self-deception. And what did we say? That the scripture says, if, you say that, if I say that I know him and I don't do what he says, I'm a liar. I'm sure some people got offended with that, but that's the Bible. We have to, first of all, we have to know that we know him, right? So first is salvation. Then you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. And you got to know what you're saying. Because many of us are running around confessing things that are not scriptural. There are no scriptural basis for that. And so, in the coming year, we're going to address that because we're going to be doing a real deep dive into the Word of God. But, for our audience, what is what are we all about? What is Pure Grace all about? 
Well, the gospel of grace, this is our vision and our mission. The gospel of grace is not a theology, but a person, Jesus Christ. Our desire is to reveal Jesus through the fullness of the Father's love through the finished work of the cross, encouraging people across the globe by unveiling our Heavenly Father's great compassion, the beauty of His Son, Jesus Christ, and His perfect work at the cross. This is at the heart of pure grace. This is what we're all about. This is what we believe. This is how we live our lives. We want to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. We want to be the church that we saw in the book of Acts in chapter 2. Not a people who say they love Jesus, but a people who live like they love Jesus because they love people. The Lord told me five years ago, the people are the mission and the mission are the people. It is about people. It's not about me as the pastor. It's about the people that Christ died on the cross to save. You know, I can tell you wholeheartedly, as Paul did in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He was not ashamed of that gospel because that gospel was powerful. And this was a man who was in prison, chained to a Roman soldier, and wrote four epistles. And he said, Rejoice in the Lord, and I say again, Rejoice. For the Lord is near. Be anxious in nothing, but in everything, through prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, bring your request before God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, we love to pray, but then we forget the other one. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble and of a good report, if anything is praiseworthy, worthy of praise, think on these things, and the God of peace shall be with you always. We read the Bible in its context so that we can understand what God is saying to us, so that we can trust God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. This is how we have victory to life. And I will tell you that, you know, I encourage you, if you're watching this and you're within uh, close proximity to our, our church, to come and join us for a worship service. Pastor Sharon led us in worship this morning. And it was powerful. And I can tell you that worship will release you into the fullness of what God has for you, provided you have a scriptural foundation, that your life is founded on the truth, and you walk in the truth, and you not only confess the truth, you live the truth. You will experience miraculous things. I was standing right over there, and in the midst of that, I felt the touch of God and the healing of God on my body. I'm not going to get into where it was or what it was, but I did. That is truth. You stand, and having done all, stand, Paul said. We are supposed to stand. We're not supposed to run. We're not supposed to hash a bye and all this other stuff. We're supposed to stand, and having done all, stand. Stand ye therefore, Paul said, with your loins girt with truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness to protect your heart, your feet shod with the stability of the gospel of peace. Wearing the helmet of salvation to protect your thoughts. And above all, the shield of faith to extinguish the fire darts enemy. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You have to wear the armor. you got to know what it is. got to stand. You shouldn't be fearful. Jesus did live. Jesus did die. And Jesus rose from the dead. And He's seated at the right hand of majesty on high. And as He is, so are you in this world. There's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear at all. So this is what we believe. This is our vision, our mission. We're passionate about it. You know, we preach and He saves and we disciple. I will tell you right now that discipleship is not evangelism. And evangelism is not discipleship. Discipleship is one-on-one, is iron sharpening iron. It's getting into the trenches. It is being with the person. It is mentoring them. It is praying for them. It is being a role model. It is not enough for the church to say, be this way, or do as I say, not as I do. I was in the army, and we led, lead by example. You lead from the front. You model the behavior that you want others to have. Jesus was no different. He walked this earth like one of us. He modeled the behavior. He modeled how we're supposed to be. He had the 120 in that upper room when he poured his spirit out. And that grew in the tens of thousands over the ages to the millions of people that are now. But we have lost 
the foundational scriptural basis for Christianity. And that is why I believe that the church today is in crisis. That is why I believe that you have a lot of public ministries and ministers who are falling because they don't have that foundation. Now, Paul said, no other foundation can be laid than Jesus Christ. So if you're saved, even if you're into crazy things, I know that's, but that's how powerful the blood of Jesus was. When you've been washed, you're washed. Think of the prodigal son. Even though he went off riotous living and did all his crazy things and did all his nuttiness, his father stood and watched from afar off. And when he saw him, he ran to him. He kissed him. He put his finger. That boy never stopped being that man's son. You can never stop being a child of God. I don't care what you're into. You can say, well, you know, pastor, hey, you know what? We're going to find out. And I guarantee you, I'll make this statement. And when we get up there, you're going to tell me, you know what, pastor, you were right. Because I've spent many years in that word. And I can tell you, God's love is never ending, never ceasing. I tried to run away from him as far as I could run away from him. And he caught me up on a mountain in Sardinia and gave me a wake-up call. And when I told him, you know what, I don't know how to come home. He said to me, that's okay, I'm going to bring you home. And he did. I'm the, who am I? I'm nobody. But once you're his, you are always his. He will leave the 99 to go find you. Once you've been found, you are found for all time. You are loved for all time. So the question becomes is, how do I live the fullness of the life that Jesus came to give me? Because Peter said, all things have been given to us pertaining to life and godliness. And that word life is bios. That's your physical life. All your needs, all your stuff, your health. If you're not healthy, how are you going to be useful for the kingdom? But we are unhealthy because we have embraced a false gospel. And we're going to see that next week as we start to look at the book of Galatians. What we meditate on affects everything about our lives. So we disciple. Now, we're not a building or an organization. We are a family. That is what the church of Jesus Christ is. Right? We, grace is not a movement or a punchline. It is a person and a way of life. It is Jesus Christ and following him as his disciple. In Romans eleven twenty, 20, he says, Come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're trying hard to please God, and if you're trying hard to be good, don't worry about it, my friends. You've already been made good. You've already been sanctified. I'm going to dispel a myth. Biblically, as we go through the books of Galatians and Romans, sanctification is not progressive. I'm going to say that again. Sanctification is not progressive. Because the word sanctified means set apart. It's in the Greek and in the Hebrew. If you were not sanctified, if you as a Christian were being progressively sanctified, you want to know that the Holy Spirit could not dwell inside of you? How do I know that? For those of you who remember when I taught on the, on the tabernacle, that building had to, be, it had to be made exactly to the Lord's specifications, and it was sanctified by blood, by the shedding of blood of a lamb. All the articles, all the vestments, all the tools by blood were sanctified and set apart. So much so that only a certain group of the, the Levites were allowed to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Because if you touched any article and you were not a priest or the special, the Korats that were elected to carry the Ark, you would die. God would struck you dead. Why? Because it was sanctified. And here's the good news. You're sanctified. You are the living tabernacle of God. And instead of ten commandments in your heart, you have the living God himself dwelling inside of you. If you were being progressively sanctified, you would still have the nature of the devil. You could not be a child of God. You could not. We also see the Ark of the Covenant went among the, the, uh, the, um, the enemies of Israel, among heathens, put before a statue. But it's never lost its power and its sanctification. The confusion is, is that transformation is progressive. 
You are progressively being transformed. Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't know the will of God? Here's why. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. The church has digested too much of the world and incorporated too much of the world into its doctrine, into its way of life. And that is why the power of God is not in the church. It's not that we're dirty, because we can never be dirty. You could be living in the pigsty. You are still a child of God. You are still holy and sanctified and set apart. But you're not living like it because you don't have a revelation of how much you're loved and how much was done for you. Because I guarantee you, once you get that revelation, your life will be transformed. Your attitudes will change. You'll be more hopeful. You will say a thing and declare a thing, and it will be so. So, that's pure grace life for us. Pure grace life is a life that lives knowing it's loved. Knowing that I am a child of God. Knowing that all my sins, past, present, and future, have been forgiven. And it lives in submission to its Savior. Come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. We need to take the yoke of the world off of us and take his yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and gentle of heart. You want to know, am I in the right church? Look to your pastor. Is he meek and gentle? Does he yell a lot? Does he sweat a lot? That's not meek and gentle, because Jesus never did any of those things. Jesus was secure in his sonship. Jesus was secure in being the beloved son of God. And as he is, so are we in this world. So you and I need to be secure that we are God's beloved child. So the world can throw whatever they want at us. The devil can throw everything else. And we are not moved because we know whose we are. Right? Now, we're going to go through difficulties. No doubt about it. Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulations and trials, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Right? And then he further went on to say in Matthew 11, for my burdens are easy and my yoke is light. If you are so burdened down and you are so exhausted and so tired, I submit to you that you are under another yoke carrying the devil's burdens and not God's. It doesn't mean life's going to be, you know, a bed of roses. But joy has nothing to do with your circumstances. Right, Pastor Sharon? Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with it. Right. Don't confuse contentment with happiness. Right. Joy is a spiritual condition. Joy is from the, of the contentment of knowing I belong to God. And God belongs to me. Amen. He's mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm His. So whatever comes my way has to go through my daddy first. And what does it say? Elder Larry's favorite verse, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. And ver but we forget about the next verse, verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he did predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. Don't fight him. If you're going through difficulties right now, it's to conform you into the image of Jesus. Look to your attitude. Right? You guys remember, look to your mouth for a warning. Look at what's coming out of your mouth. Are you always talking about your sickness, your disease, medication, and this thing, and that thing, and there's this other thing I saw on television that treats this and that. Listen, this body, in a moment, is going to be transformed to be exactly like His. What's inside of you looks exactly like God. You're like, what? Yeah, you're born again. You've been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have a new spirit. Same old body, new spirit. So what the Holy Spirit wants to do is to transform this flesh that you're in right now into a body that can do the will of God, that can accomplish His purposes, right? For His will to do according to His good purposes. But we can't do that if our mind is meditating on the things of the world and our problems and our sicknesses and our diseases and our infirmity. And I am not telling you something that I have not done myself. Right, Pastor Sharon? Okay? Because so for those of you who know me, I was a mess just a few weeks ago. And I started taking this truth to my heart because I've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And I started saying, no, that's... And getting into that word and walking it out and ignoring the splitting headaches and ignoring the pain and looking to the Lord and saying, Lord, I trust you. 
I still took my medications. It's okay. You know what? Because I don't want to be in rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and hydraulic. God resisted the proud and to give it grace to the humble. Don't make the mistake of thinking, I am sick. No, your body is sick. Not you. Not the real you. Your body needs repair. Well, as soon as you start saying I, then you, you, you're taking the real you, the identity of who Christ made you to be, and you're saying it's sick. And I got news for you. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God is not sick. Our bodies wear down. We live in a hostile environment. But it, if we focus on the spiritual things, the spirit will strengthen the body. He who is able to do exceedingly, in Ephesians 4, to do abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. That is the power of the divine influence upon our heart. And we keep short-circuiting that thing. Let the Holy Spirit have full reign in your life. Now, am I 100% healed? No, but I could not stand for 45 minutes of worship, true or not. I couldn't stand at all. You guys know. I'd be seating. And I stood the whole time. And I'm standing now. As a testimony to the power of God, when you start knowing, wow, you know what, I'm really loved. This is how much I'm loved. That's at the heart of the pure grace life, is knowing how much you're loved. You may not be perfect in the natural, but in the spirit, you are perfect. You are perfectly loved, perfectly nurtured. God fawns over you because you're his child. Which brings me to this. Knowing and believing and embracing and experience the Father's great love is at the heart of pure grace ministries and a pure grace life. Knowing the Father's love. Man, you want to not be shaken? Focus on the fact of how much you're loved. Jesus said, no greater love has a man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. We're not just robots, right? We're not just servants. We're his friends. And he's our brother. And we're his little brothers and sisters. And we have a father who made all that we see and is powerful and the demons are terrified of him. But we shouldn't go around boasting in that. What we need to boast is how much we're loved. Focus on that. Meditate on that. This is how much I'm loved. You know, sometimes you've got to put muffles on and ignore your body because I know what it's like to be in pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week and sleeping most of the day. But in the midst of all that, I said, you know what? I know one day, my body, in the blink of an eye, my body will be transformed, and I'll be exactly like him. And I yielded to the Holy Spirit, and I meditated on the Lord. I set my thoughts on things above and not on things of the earth, where Christ sits in Corinthians 3.1. For you are dead, and your life is hidden in Christ. It's not hidden in, in the cable news networks. It's not in the news reports and medical journals and whatever. It is hidden in Christ. Hidden in Christ. Prayer and worship is central to us. We, we pray. We have a wonderful prayer team here. We worship. We love to worship. We give a lot of time to worship. Maritam, as a matter of fact, Pastor Sharon has more of the floor than I do around here. And that is my favorite time is worship because worship is just you and God. To prepare your heart for what the Holy Spirit is about to say or wants to say to you. And we live in love and community. We are a people that not only live together, but we love and we care for one another. <coughs> Pure Grace Ministries has always been the, the place for love and grace. It is actually our, little, our tagline when you Google our, our website. That's what comes up. We, we live out grace locally while impacting globally. This is how the ministry began with a group of people in, in a basement and we went live and all of a sudden, you know, thousands upon thousands of people are following us all over the globe. And we have over a thousand pastors and growing globally that follow us. Everyone with a hunger to be more like Jesus, to enter into the fullness of what grace is. So here at Pure Grace, teaching and instructing the Word, we create a deep understanding of the Word and the one who inspired it. This creates... Oh, we lost the signal. That's okay. This creates 
a, a biblical foundation for you to live your life in. What we're going to do this coming year, don't worry about it. See, the devil, he, he ain't happy about what we're doing here, but that's okay. We're going to start off with the book of Galatians, which is falling from grace. We're going to get into it, and that's going to start next Sunday, January 8th. Then from then, we're going to roll over into Paul's letter to the Romans, which is the foundations of grace. And, you know, when you think about pure grace ministry, you know, you ask yourself, what if there was a kind of a church, a place to belong before you even walked in the door? And we have been reaching out to so many people across the globe and locally that you can get a feel for who we are even before you walk in the door. And we spread the gospel of grace through social media and the web. That's how the ministry has grown. And as a matter of fact, this, this building, the structure that we're in, the chapel, was built for, I didn't realize just how many people were actually following us until I asked for prayer. And in addition to prayer, I got money. And we were able to build this plus the courtyard with, without borrowing money, as opposed to asking for money. You know, people know where the box is to put their tithes. I don't, I'm not here to, to be a bill collector. I'm here to preach the truth. And then what you give is between you and God. You don't want to tithe? That's between you and him. Not me. I got nothing to do with that. Because God's already proven to me that he can take care of me. Ain't that right, Pastor Sharon? All right? We've been in our marriage in 30 years. 31 cents in the bank. Rent due. Car payments due. No food in the refrigerator. No food in the cupboards. And God sustained us for two and a half years. So I can't say that I have not experienced that love firsthand. Threatening people to take the home and everything else. We've been everywhere and everything, but we're still standing. Because we've kept our eyes on the one. That's why we can say, Pastor Sharon and I can say, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation for everyone who believes. You believe and God will be there for you. He absolutely will. And so we meet people right where they live, right in their homes. And how do we do that? We're on Kingdom Community Television, seven days a week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's on the Amazon Fire Stick, Roku, Apple TV, Google TV. You can download the app on, on the App Store uh, or Google Play. And, we're on, and on their website, Kingdom Community Television. This was a door that God opened for us th uh, this past year. And people are getting blessed and, and tuning in and getting a lot of it. If you do what God has called you to do, God will take care of the rest. You don't have to worry about anything else. You know, here at Pure Grace, we have weekly discipleship teaching. We're going to be going into Galatians and we're going to look at it. And what you, the audiences, are going to see that are watching this is 30 minutes of teaching. And everything's going to be bite-sized so that you can digest it. But the benefit of being here in person is that after I'm done preaching, I'm going to have audience participation where people can ask questions about something they didn't understand or that something the Lord showed them through the teaching of that moment so that we can really do get into it because you want to get the truth deep down inside of you so when the enemy comes, you can resist him. We also have prayer partners here. Our prayer team is faithful and diligent and has been since the foundations of this ministry. Right? Now, Scripturally, there's no such thing as a prayer warrior. I can absolutely tell you that. There's no precedent for it. We are all supposed to pray because prayer is like breathing. Prayer is talking to your father. So if you have somebody else talking to him on your behalf, you don't understand grace. You don't understand what was done for you on the cross. We also have counseling. Pastor Sharon and I have counseled people, couples, individuals to help them along the path, you know, and I actually have someone here who knows firsthand what that's like and the benefits of it, right? Where all of a sudden you come in feeling dirty and then you feel like, wait a minute, I'm not dirty. I am clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden your life begins to change and you look at things very differently. You know, and fellowship, we're big on that because we're a church and a family. We're not an organization or a building, so we spend time together in each other's lives. Now, I want to play this last thing as we get ready to close. And this is really a challenge, not just to this ministry and to this church, but to all the churches. Uh, what should the church be? What if we went on more for what we love instead of what we hate? The 
that make a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? Would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference Jesus has made in our lives and stop pushing away those who aren't there yet? That make a difference. Oh, I guess we lost this time. Would that make a difference? Surrounded by broken pain and rose. Moment rose. We Okay, well, we have, we, Love here we go. Jesus. What if the church acted like the church? Would that make a difference? It's time for the church to act like the church. We were put on this earth to carry on a mission. And Jesus said, he who believes in me, greater works than these shall he do. And he talks about these are the signs that shall follow them that believe. Right? They shall speak with new tongues. Right? He talks about if they take up any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When James talked about in the book of James, when he said, If there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And if they've committed any sin, it shall be forgiven them. That was not for you and I. But the church has used that to call people up for prayer. You have to use the word of God the way God intended for his word to be used. You cannot use a verse that was intended for an unsaved person and apply it to your life. Because then if I follow that thing, that means that, okay, so that I'm sick, maybe I committed a sin, and, and, and it needs to be forgiven me. If that was the case, then the power of the blood of Jesus would not be efficacious. That would mean that the blood of a, a lamb killed for the entire nation of Israel once a year was enough to cover the sins for an entire nation, give them bumper crops, give them victory over their enemies. You know why Israel... They fell to the enemies because they stopped the sacrifice every year. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The Bible is clear on that. But Jesus said, it is finished when he hung on that cross. That blood, for all time, has washed away the stain of sin on your life. That's why there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you and I free from the law of sin and death. And you have to believe that. And I know that's so wonderful. And, and you know, we start to measure ourselves and we look at our own lives and say, well, how could that be? It, it's true. When he said, if there be any sick among you, you have to understand that the church of Jesus Christ in its inception was notoriously generous. To strangers. They would open up their homes to whoever would come in. So when they would have church in homes, they didn't have buildings back then, in homes, you had saved Jews, unsaved Jews, saved Gentiles, unsaved Gentiles. That's why in John's letter, which we confess ad nauseum, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And many, 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 many preachers use that to tell people you need to confess your sins every night. No. What it was saying to the Gnostics, see, you have to know, sometimes, and Lord, Lord thank you for forgiving me for what I'm about to say, but sometimes I wonder if the people who went to seminary school fell asleep when they were teaching that. 
because I didn't, and I went to the Christian Missionary Alliance, and they were very legalistic. <laughs> but you have to read the word in its original, understand in its original language, historically, grammatically. Who was it written to? Who was the author? What language was it written? And what was going on in the social dynamics of the time? There were Gnostics in the church that John wrote that to. So he's saying, hey, you know what? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And in the Greek, it is the definite article. It means you confess your sins, all your sin debt is wiped clean for all time. That is the kind of thing that we want to go into the new year. We want to lay the foundation. Paul said no other foundation can be laid than that which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. But then we build on it, whether silver, or gold, or precious gems, or wood, hay, and stubble. He said, whatever, a man, whatever work, manner of work a man's work is, the fire will reveal it on that day. There's two fires. The fires that we go down here, tri trials and tribulations that we go through, you can say, oh, I trust Jesus, I trust Jesus, and all of a sudden, boom, you lose your job. You're like, oh, no problem. Fire, you know, I have a good resume. Day, a week, a month, three months, four months, six months. You're out of work for a year. Now, all of a sudden, where's your faith? Run out the window. But if you trust God, you're going to say, like we, Pastor Sharon and I say, you know what? He was there with us when we only had 31 cents in the bank. He'll be with us now. Because he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And he will come through for you every single time. You, my friends, and I do not stand on shaky ground. We stand on solid ground, the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And what we build it in our own lives, gold, silver, and precious gems. Gold is symbolic of divine righteousness, which is a gift that was imputed to us on the cross. One of my favorite verses in Romans, Paul says, By the one man's sin, many were made sinners. Also by the one man's sacrifice the many who are made righteous. That's you and I. You have to know these things in those moments when you're struggling with a bad attitude or a bad temper, whatever the issue is, is no, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is not my nature. I have a new nature. I am a new creature. Those are the things that we need to confess. And silver is redemption. Our Lord was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And precious gem speaks of the pre high priest's linen ephod. One stone for each of the tribes, close to God's heart. That's you and I. If you're listening to messages that do not reveal the heart of God, that do not show you how much God loves you, that, does, that makes you work for a righteousness that was imputed to you through the blood of Jesus Christ, and does not talk to you about that you have been redeemed by that blood for all time, then you're sitting under another gospel. And that's where the wood and the hay and the stubble. People that talk about... Bearing, carrying your cross. I don't have time to get into that, but that's not what Jesus meant. Carrying your cross and bearing your cross and reminding you of your sin. That's wood. And hay is what they feed horses and mules. And what are they? Beasts of burden. They carry loads. And stubble is good for nothing. Makes you feel good in the moment, and once you hit the parking lot, it's gone. That's not who we are. We're going to enter into a year of abundant grace because for people in this ministry, and if you've been following this ministry for the last six years, God rewards obedience and God rewards faithfulness. So we are about to enter into that place which Psalms 150 talks about. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And they that go forth weeping, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtlessly come again rejoicing, bearing their sheaves with them. My friends, the time of our rejoicing is, is nigh upon us. The time of coming back with our sheaves, the time of being rewarded for our faithfulness and our commitment to the work of the Lord in this ministry and in this church is coming on us. It's coming. And I thank you all who have been committed and consistent with your support for this ministry, with your prayers, with you being here, with being here for us and your financial giving. God will reward that. And all those of you who are so far away that you can't physically be here but have given into this ministry and have invested your time and, and, and your treasure into this ministry, the reward's coming to you too. And I thank you for that. And so for those of you who live near us, 
We invite you, come and be a part of it. We are here every Sunday at 1030. We start our worship service and the chapel is located behind the parsonage, which is where Pastor Sharon and I live. But if you want to know, you want to get directions, visit our website. If you, this is obviously on social media, on Facebook. You're able to get our information and our information is on YouTube. So God bless you and stay tuned. Next week, we are going to be kicking off our study in uh, Galatians. So make sure you have your Bibles and your notebooks ready and God bless you until then.